Hello and welcome to the Aquarium. Come in and take a seat, the show is about to begin. This week we're taking a look at the manta ray. The manta here on Ark seems to be a bit of a mix of ray species. The dossier mentions it feeds on plankton, but it has a sting in its tail. So what's the real manta ray like? And what characteristics belong to other species? Well, let's take a look. Manta rays are found in tropical and subtropical waters in all the world's major oceans. They've been found as far north as North Carolina, USA, and as far south as North Island of New Zealand. There are two species of manta ray. The larger species, known as the giant oceanic manta ray, is the largest ray species in the world and can grow to a size of 7 metres, that's about 23 feet across, and weighs up to 1,350 kilograms, that's about 2,980 pounds. It is an ocean-going species and spends most of its life far away from the shore and will migrate following ocean currents to areas where upwellings of nutrient-rich water increase prey concentrations. The smaller species of manta ray are known as reef manta rays. Although smaller, they are still the second largest species of ray known and can grow from around 3 metres up to 5.5 metres, that's about 10 to 18 feet across. They were considered the same species as their larger relative until a detailed study comparing their differences took place in 2009. It is found in coastal regions swimming in shallow water close to the surface during the day, but at night it will seek deeper water. It stays mostly in one territory, although short seasonal migrations do occur. Both species are filter feeders, consuming large quantities of zooplankton, like shrimp and krill. The manta will slowly swim around its prey, herding it into a tight ball, and then swoops through the ball with its mouth open. The small food particles are caught by the tissue between the gill arches. Because of their large size and the ability to swim fast, up to 24 kilometers an hour or 15 miles per hour, they have very few natural predators. But they are hunted by large sharks such as the tiger shark and the great hammerhead shark, and also by killer whales. Manta rays are listed as vulnerable by the IUCN and face several threats to their existence. The greatest threat is overfishing. They are long-lived with a low reproduction rate, usually one or two pups every one or two years. This makes them very susceptible to overfishing. They are sought after for their meat, liver oil and skin, and parts of them are used in traditional Chinese medicine. Because mantas must constantly swim to pass oxygenated water over their gills, they are vulnerable to entanglement in fishing nets and lines. They cannot swim backwards and will often attempt to free themselves by somersaulting, entangling themselves further. Once they are tangled, they quickly suffocate. Here in Ark, the rays are described as having a sting in their tail. In reality, mantas do not have this sting. This is to be found in the closely related stingrays. There are 220 known species of stingray. Most are found in coastal waters of tropical and subtropical oceans, but there are species which are found in deep ocean waters and some which live in fresh water. Unlike manta rays, the stingrays do not need to keep swimming in order to breathe and have a complex respiratory system to aid them, especially when they bury themselves and wait to ambush their prey. Stingrays are considered to be mostly docile and only attack when provoked. Most stingray-related injuries to humans occur to the ankles and lower legs when someone accidentally steps on a ray buried in the sand and the frightened fish flips up its dangerous tail. Fatalities in humans are very rare because while extremely painful, the stingray venom isn't usually deadly, unless the strike hits the chest or the abdomen area. Stingrays attack with a sting located in the base of their tail. The sting contains a sharp spine with serrated edges or barbs that face the body of the fish. There is a venom gland at the base of the spine and a membrane-like sheath that covers the entire sting mechanism. When the stingray attacks, it needs to be facing its victim, because all it does is it flips its long tail upwards over its body and so strikes whatever is in front of it. The ray doesn't have direct control over the sting mechanism, only over the tail. In most cases, when the sting enters a person's body, the pressure causes the protective sheath to tear. When the sheath tears, the sharp serrated edges of the spine sink in and venom flows into the wound. The venom is very painful and contains enzymes that cause muscle paralysis and cell death. 
If the venom is introduced into an area like the ankle, it can usually be treated. Heat breaks down stingray venom and limits the amount of damage it can do. If not treated quickly enough, amputation might be necessary. But if the venom enters the abdomen or chest cavity, the resulting tissue death can be fatal because of the major organs located in the vicinity. If the spike enters the heart, as is reported to be the case in Steve Owen's accident, the results are typically fatal. While a stingray's venom can do serious damage, the most destructive part of the sting's mechanism can actually be the barbs on the spine. The sharp tip of the sting enters the person pretty smoothly, but pulling the spike out of a human chest or abdomen could be enough to cause death from the massive tearing of tissue that results. Well that's all we have for you this week, thank you so much for watching, as always I hope you've enjoyed the video and you've learned something new, and I hope to see you next time here at the Aquarium when we'll be looking at the Nadaria. Goodbye.